RFK Jr. may have left the Democratic Party, but he's still having a pretty significant impact on Democratic candidate polls, especially uh, President Joe Biden's poll numbers. As Breaking, Co uh, Breaking Point's co-host Sagar and Jetty posted, quote, it's one thing to ignore Robert Kennedy Jr. in a Democratic primary, but it is a whole other to ignore him when he is shaping up to be the most formidable third party candidate in more than a century. According to a recent New York Times Siena College poll, RFK Jr. is raking in as much as 25 percent support in some key battleground states like Michigan and Georgia. Now, many argue the spoiler candidate should be allowed to participate in presidential debates, uh, especially if he gets ballot access while polling this high. If he spoils the race, so be it. They can try to uh, other candidates can talk about the issues that mattered to him in order to compete for those votes as well. But the Lincoln Project, a centrist PAC, decried Fox News' coverage of RFK Jr., Cornell West, and Dean Phillips' campaigns, accusing them of being part of the, quote, Trump coalition, those candidates. Over the proofs in the pudding, a new 2024 poll out of Iowa shows Trump leading 41 percent, Biden at 35 percent, and independent RFK Jr. and Cornell West earning 16 and 4 percent, respectively, for a total of 20 percent of the vote. So RFK Jr.'s current poll numbers um, are very significant, um, and they're reminiscent of a kind of actually Ross Perot sort of three-way race. Um, that, that's, a, that's a significant amount of support. That's you know, above the kind of baseline support that third parties are usually getting somewhere between like one and five percent um, in the polls, and then you know one percent at the end of the day. The Libertarian Party did a little bit, a little bit better than that in um, in uh, 2016, I believe. So substantially better than that, but still you know single digit results. Um, RFK Jr. is slated to have an effect. Yeah. So the Lincoln Project is a group of never Trump Republicans that have allied themselves with the Democratic Party and who right. are frustrated forever and always by third party efforts because they're concerned about a spoiler effect that would put Trump back in office. What's interesting is that polls are sort of mixed about who RFK Jr. has a negative effect on. It, what we saw when he was a Democrat seemed to be that the logic was because he was running in the Democratic Party. By default, he was going to be taking uh, votes away from uh, Joe Biden in the primary. Obviously, Donald Trump isn't competing in the Democratic primary. So there seemed to be some advantage to conservative outlets and kind of independents to give him a platform, buoy him, and laud the things about his platform that they also agree with. Now that he's running as an independent, I think you've seen a little bit of a shift, um, and wherein, because he does seem to be um, pulling a lot of voters who are disaffected from both parties, potentially a threat, you're not seeing him get the same amount of uh, accolades. I do think that his own behavior has played a role in this. Uh, his stance on Israel and his stance on some of the free speech issues relating to Israel haven't helped him very much. Uh, but I also think a, a lot of it is that the media attention, the character of the media attention that he used to get from the right has changed. Yeah, the, the Lincoln Project, I would have even sterner criticism of them. Um, you know, they claim to be people trying to rescue the Republican Party mm -hmm. for Donald Trump, I would say they're basically just operating as Democrats and, in fact, are kind of grifting people into thinking that they're actually Republicans. They're, you know, Joy Reid's favorite Republican. They're on MSNBC a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they got caught. They did—do you remember that stunt? Like, they, they, they were very anti-Glenn Youngkin. You know, they say they're— just focused on the good of the Republican Party and getting rid of Trump, but they, they went hard after Glenn Youngkin. They did that tiki torch stunt. Do you remember that? They oh, tried baby. to make it look like there were racist people supporting Youngkin, but that would like that was their it was a it was a whole embarrassing thing. Actually, I did think I did a radar on it a long time ago. Mm. If you want to Google that, <laughs> um, but anyway, yes. So of course they're going to disparage anything that threat that they perceive is threatening um, Joe Biden. Now. It's an open question at this point whether RFK Jr.'s independent candidacy is hurting Joe Biden more, Donald Trump more, or whether, I mean, and I, I don't think that matters. Again, I think that's fine for him to eat into support. That's how it works. You do, no one is owed your vote. You don't have to, you shouldn't be thinking, oh, well, I just have to vote for the least bad candidate. No, you should vote for the candidate you like the best. If if other uh, if the other candidates did a better job speaking to the issues that RFK Jr. represents, he wouldn't have this, um, this large um, faction behind him. But uh, it, it is clear, I think, that uh, there are a lot of conservatives who are interested in him. Um, a lot of independents, a lot of disaffected people, um, people who are dissatisfied with both 
major parties, and uh, and he has a very you know interesting coalition. He's probably winning votes for people who are not going to vote for either of the other well, two. Well, so anyway. a Quinnipiac poll that was released a, a week ago showed. Um, the, and again, in this matchup, Biden is narrowly ahead of Trump by one point, this was a week ago, within the margin of error in a head-to-head -head matchup, if Kennedy was not involved. If Kennedy were involved in a three-way race, Biden is ahead with 39 percent to 36 percent. Right. So he increases his uh, margin uh, over Donald Trump. That is, I think, why we've seen this big turn of events. It, that puts the Lincoln Project in a, in a weird situation, because they are arguing against people like RFK Jr., even though by some indication he would actually help them in their goal of defeating Donald Trump. But I think the real takeaway is that nobody really knows, and they would prefer a world where uh, RFK Jr. is not continuing to be ascendant. And not just Robert uh, F. Kennedy Jr., by the way, is in the mix as an independent. Cornel West has now left the Green Party, and it's mm. worth looking a little bit about uh, what's going on with these other candidates. Now, independent candidate Cornel West took a jab at Biden for his low standing in the polls, posting on X, formerly Twitter, quote, POTUS doesn't need me to spoil his reelection bid. His milk toast, neoliberal agenda leading us to war, climate calamity, and more poverty is doing that for him. It's time to break the derelict duopoly into tiny little pieces and engender a new U.S. polity rooted in truth, justice, and love. The main mainstream media also appeared to parrot the White House Kareem Jean-Pierre's comments, writing off the Biden's poll numbers. MSNBC contributor Dr. Jason Johnson took to X, writing, quote, the recent New York Times Siena poll, only bad news for Biden if the presidential election were tomorrow, but it's not, so he's fine. We're seeing a lot of that, and I can't imagine a more <coughs> open Excuse expression me. of indifference to voters' frustration than saying, they'll be over in a year. But that's what the Democratic Party has been doing for years now, is treat every criticism as just a political matter, nothing substantive, nothing that needs to be changed, nothing that needs to be addressed. The Democratic Party says the party doesn't need to change, the candidates don't need to change, the polity needs to change. Mm -hmm. They couldn't possibly know what they want. That's what you say when you can't change, or you won't change, or, or you you're unwilling change. to change. You're unwilling to change. And for what it's worth, you, what you've seen on the Republican side of the aisle is that the, um, uh, the insurgent Tea Party, uh, Freedom Caucus, whatever you want to call them, faction of the party, has had the effect of dragging the party to the right. And what it's interesting to look at how they've affected the um, the House differently than the Senate. You see, because of the existence of that faction in the House, there is a real appetite for voting down Joe Biden's funding efforts for Ukraine and uh, Israel in a way that you do not see among Republican senators. So you have a real world example of what it would mean for there to be an insurgent left, for there to be a Democratic Party that for one reason or another was forced to actually say, hey, this is where the electorate is, let's move to them. But that hasn't been the case, and I think that the reason is because both parties are captured by the same um, financial interests and drive in the same direction, especially on these big issues like war. We'll have more rising right after this.